Well, hey, I appreciate you guys joining me again. Hey, this is Jamison Sharp and Michael Graber. Hey, and you're listening to the Jiu Jitsu Takedown Podcast. So tonight we got some very interesting subjects and topics we want to talk about. Not only uh, do we have huge news, but uh, I think, Professor, why don't you tell him the huge news about well, our academy? Uh, Euler Gracie, the son of Grandmaster Elio Gracie, four-time uh, IBJJF world champion, Pan American champion, pride fight competitor, pride fight champion, so MMA champion. So is coming to our location here in Kansas City, 1323 Atlantic Af Avenue in North Kansas City on June 7th. So that's uh, Friday, two, actually two weeks from today. So I got a lot of cleaning to do and make sure this place is in tip top you know, shape. For... You have an impressive history with Hoyler. Tell us a little bit about your history with the, not only Hoyler Gracie, but his family. I mean, you've been down there to the ranch and you've, it's just crazy. I mean, he's been down there to Brazil to train. Tell us a little about that. That's interesting. So Megaton, my instructor, he, he grew up in Rio de Janeiro with right. Hoyler. So, uh, you know, Megaton's story is he was trained in judo and then when he got to a certain age, his judo coach uh, introduced him to the Gracies, and then he started training with Hoyler. And he was, you know, real good friends with Hoyler because him and Hoyler were about the same height and weight, so they were always sparring partners. You know, and then uh, always when Hoyler and Megaton would compete, I remember Megaton would always have to cut weight to 134 to go fight because Hoyler would be fighting at the 147 division, and Megaton won the wow. world champion. Yeah. You know, and if if those two met in the middle, he'd have to bow out to, to Hoyler, so he would always drop his weight. You know. To go compete, so uh, you know. Then, of course, Megaton moved to the states in 1994. Uh, I met Megaton in '96. Started training with him then. And uh, you know, uh, Euler, I think the, I think he came a couple times. The first picture I had of him was in 2002. He did a seminar for us. Uh, I think he was out a couple times. I'm sure he was out a couple times before that. I just uh, yeah. slept since then, so it's hard sure. to remember. But. I did in 2003, right after I graduated uh, Arizona State. It was, that was my, my gift to myself. It was kind of my, my goal that I had up on my wall, you know, on my yeah. picture boards that I'm going to go to Brazil and I'm going to train. <laughs> so uh, it was actually not too long after having knee surgery and getting that, coming back from recovery, and then uh, going down there and, and going to train for a month, you know, at Gracie Umaita, you know, Umaita 52, that's the address again. In, in Rio de Janeiro, so the time of my life, of course. You know, oh, yeah. Woke up every day, go train, train a couple times a day, go eat, you know, just absorb the culture, go to the beach, you know. Uh, it, was, it was just such a great experience. And then actually, at one point, you know, these uh, buses came by, so now you know, the buses came by outside the academy, and we all went to the ranch, so the Gracie Ranch, oh, all, yeah. uh, and got, you know, got to do a seminar with uh, Grandmaster Elio. So that was such a great experience. To be For honest. those of you guys that do not know, who are just tuning in and watching this podcast or video, this is Grandmaster Elio Gracie, Hoyler Gracie's father, and the Gracie clan's grandmaster. Now, if you do not know the history, Elio's brother, Carlos, was trained in Jiu-Jitsu by Count Maeda. Go look it up, it's fascinating stuff. Sure. So they all lived on that ranch. It was Elio and, and, and Carlos, and they had about 20 some kids, yeah. and they all trained Jiu Jitsu. So it's just this army of Jiu Jitsu kids up there. Uh, so you know, I got to got to go down there and experience that. It was definitely something that I you know, take with me for the rest of my life. That is an experience. So. I, I, you know, one of these days I would love to do it myself and go down there and see Holker. Sure. Because Holker still runs the school down there, doesn't he? Yeah, Holker Gracie is Hoyler's brother. So yeah, Holker is Hoyler's brother. And uh, uh, Holker runs the school down there, and so it's Igor and a few other Gracies that are down there. Enzo has got a place down there. Sure. And so, but uh, yeah, one of these days I'll make it back down there. I was just there literally not that long ago, but uh, that's how I ended up here. <laughs> but, anyways, really great stuff. Hoyler Gracie's coming to Gracie Umaita, Kansas City. June 7th. Look us up on Facebook. We've got a big ad out there. We want you to sign up. We would love to have you. If you're in the actual region of Kansas City, come. Come to the seminar. You will get so much value out of the seminar. It's going to be nuts. If you're into martial arts or self-defense, guess what? 
you need to be here for this seminar, absolutely. So moving on, hey, locally here in Kansas City, we got some great competition starting to crop up. And sure, yeah. You know, we always got, you know, jiu-jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu competitions going on, but here locally, we got a few that are, you know, coming up recently. We got the, what, the Sunflower State game? Sure, we got, uh, the first one that's coming up is the day after Hoyler, so that's Saturday after he leaves. A bunch of our kids are gonna go there. A couple of our guys are gonna go compete at uh, Naga, and that's at uh, 68 Sports down in Overland Park. So okay. that's on uh, June 8th. Uh, same day uh, is the Fuji M Missouri State Championship that's out in Columbia, oh, wow. Missouri. So they got those events going on. I know some people are gonna go out to that one. Some people are gonna stay here and do the local one, but both great tournaments to go to. Uh, and then the Sunflower State Games is gonna be the 30th anniversary of the Sunflower State Games. Oh, that's, that's big. Yeah, that, so, you know, how long ago did they just introduce you to? Uh, it wasn't that long ago, right? Um, I think it's like the first year that I moved out here. I went, I went to that and competed. So somewhere around 2005 or 2006, somewhere around that yeah, area. It's so. been about I don't know, 12 10, years. Yeah. So, yeah, so don't quote me on that. <laughs> We're just guesstimating here. But sure. it's, a, it's a great competition. I got, I got to give a shout out to a friend of mine. Uh, I, if you guys don't know, Hoist Gracie was just here in Kansas City. So I got to give a big shout out to Tyson. I gotta give a big shout out to my partner who I met for this event, who is also an MMA amateur mixed martial artist. And he's a judo and jiu-jitsu guy, he was great. His name's Joel Nichols out of Omaha, fantastic guy. And he's gonna be competing in the Sunflower State Games. I think he's gonna go either judo or jiu-jitsu or both maybe. But anyways, I'm gonna lend my support to you. Got a big shout out for you, brother. Yeah, it's good, he's out with the Team Voggy. So Team Voggy guys are in uh, uh, Omaha. And then, yeah. Like you guys in St. Louis, so you know they're all yeah, okay. my top brothers. Right, you know? exactly. And you got a congratulations you want to send out uh, for your, for your brothers, for, for our brothers in Chicago, correct? Oh yeah, yeah. So uh, I mentioned too, one of one of my friends uh, that I've been always talking to. He, he started jujitsu kind of around the same time that I did. His name's Thomas Rzuski, and uh, he he's uh, Roll Academy. He just hit their four year anniversary, so. Uh, congratulations to Thomas and everybody out in, in uh, actually over in uh, Orland Park, Orland Park, uh, Illinois. But uh, yeah, great school out there. Every time I go home, I try to see him. And you know, of course, everywhere I go, you know, everywhere you go, you bring your gi, and there's yeah. always a place to travel. That's I think great. you know. Uh, before a lot is always apprehensive to go train other places because you walk in there and you're sure. like fresh meat. So, right. uh, but nowadays, that's I think we we especially here at Grace we went to Kansas City and. We always have a lot of people. We're close to downtown, and we get a lot of people that come in for conferences and stuff. And you know, they always come in, and it was always great. You know, it was always open door for them to come, come here and come train with us. Literally, um, we had a, a guy from Indiana who uh, yeah. he, he was a fighter out of out of Indiana. Uh, Jack McVickers, is, Jack exactly. McVickers, a black belt under Megaton. And yeah, I, I can't remember his name. Dane. Daniel. Yeah. Daniel. Daniel, if you're watching this, we love you, brother. Thanks for coming in. So he was able to, you know, come out. He's, ah, I want to come out and train. He's only trained one day. He was here for a couple of days, but that's even great. You know, even yeah. if you be able to come down for one day, you know, absolutely, uh, it's, it's always good to have people from other other uh, academies come. So if you're swinging by Kansas City, please come on in. We'd love to have you. Absolutely, we always like to have guests and host guests. So and then uh, the last tournament that we got going on, I mentioned, it's, it's about a little over a month away, but uh, Fuji. The uh, Fuji uh, Kansas City Championship is going to be coming here. They're uh, usually right out at the uh, airport. airport. Yeah. Uh, what do you call it? The Expo Center? The Expo Center. So yeah. That is on uh, uh, July 20th. So let me ask you this, Professor. What is probably the ultimate prize here in Kansas City for Jiu Jitsu competition? What's the best tournament to win if you are going after you know, a BGJ championship? Uh, you know, I think they're all good. I think Fuji's are really well rounded. Good run tournaments, uh, you know. Uh, I, I've been always trying to go to those, take our guys to those. Uh, we don't have an IBJJF tournament here yet, so you know that's. If you'd ask my instructor Megaton, he's like, "Hey, you know, go compete at the IBJJF right. tournament." Hey, it's good to compete in local tournaments, but sure. hey, you know, you, you should be competing at the the major leagues, right? And that's what they consider that. But you know, Fuji's are really good tournaments. Nagas are typically good tournaments. Uh, but yeah, you know, we, we try to 
get out to that Cal the Missouri State Championship every once in a while. You know, it's, that's uh, the other part about it is just you know being able to get a team together and you get everybody mm -hmm. in and maybe share hotel rooms and everybody sure. loads up in the car and, oh, yeah. and you go drive out and spend a couple of days there and it's just you're on kind of on edge because you're you know compete right. you're, you're with a group of people and then you know you go compete and then you come back and it's you know you have that whole ride back for you know, three hours and talking about oh, man, you know, <laughs> either you're looking at your medal or you're watching right. the match going man I, 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 this is where everything went wrong you know right, so, right. Uh, you know what they say you, either win or you learn so absolutely I get it you know win or learn sink or swim sure. you know you competed quite a bit do you have any lessons learned that you want to share. Lessons learned about competing. I mean, because we got BJJ guys that come across our little podcast and YouTube channel. Sure, and, sure. You know, well, I think the most important thing is, to, you know, is to have a game plan. Uh, you know, yes. A lot of people talk about that, and even myself before, it's like, oh, I'll just see what happens. Well, yeah. if you go out there and say, I'm going to see what happens, the person that comes in with a game plan says, well, I'm going to come in here, and as soon as I shake hands, I'm going to go for this takedown. And if that takedown doesn't work, then I'm going to try this takedown. If that doesn't work, maybe I'm going to pull guard. You know, I'm going to pull this guard. And, and I think uh, as, as we people ask us, hey, when, when can I go compete and do my first tournament? And I, say, I sit down and we have a list, you know, that we kind of have and say, Where's, what are you going to do if somebody has you mounted? All the bad positions. If, if you're you know, in a bad position to mount, you're in a bad position to cross side position, uh, cross mount, whatever you want to call it. You know, what if, uh, you know, somebody is, uh, you're in somebody's guard. And you need to, what's your pass? What are your, what are your go-tos? Right. You need to have that. And you need to kind of, Tell that to your coach because if I know your plan, then I'm not going to tell you to do something that's outside your plan. Sure. Like, okay, you should have. It's what uh, I love. What you know, Megaton speech. What he said. It's like, what do you need to compete in jiu-jitsu? You need one arm bar. You need one sweep. You need one takedown. The you need one choke. Just one. One of each of yours. You know, and then train it. You know, train it. Uh, like Megaton said, he doesn't. He's not one for repetition. Uh, I think because he's been doing it for so sure. long. He, his repetition is competition. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because he competes. He is a beast. Every you watch him online, not, not only from his competition videos, but if he, he was just came back from the IBJJF uh, championships in Europe. And he, uh, him and his team just cleaned house. And by the way, we are a part of Team Megaton here, absolutely. And, uh, you know, that kind of rolls us into our next topic that we want to kind of discuss. Team Megaton, yes, and we're very proud to be a part of uh, Megaton's I hope my umbrella. I hope, I hope I'm able to stay in it. You know, sure. Megaton is, you know, he's definitely one of the greatest competitors, and he's had a down. Man, he's a hard competitor. And uh, I'll be honest with you, the last time that he, he came here for a seminar, I had a lot going on. I did a seminar one day. The next day, I went and did the. Uh, a fight for Blue Corner. Our, our friends over at Blue Corner put on an event. Travis Conley and the guys out there uh, put on an event. I got to go fight, you know. And uh, you know, we got done with the seminar, and then of course, you know, went uh, went out to eat together. Got home late, and slept the whole day, tried to try to recover sure. and get ready for this. And then, you know, we came and said, "Okay, we'll go. We'll roll around a little bit for a while. You know, just kind of, you know, just kind of do some situational stuff." So. You know, we shake hands and go, and it was just game on. Oh my gosh, just over and over and over. I was like I said, one of the other guys, Joey. You know, he says like I never heard you scream like that because when Megaton goes for a submission, he usually catch my arm, and I don't think I have time to tap. Yeah. Because when he gets it, he's exactly. he's not. I know he's not going to break my arm, but it feels like he's going to break oh, my yeah. arm. So it's ah, just scream <laughs> like okay, and then you go again, and then ah, it was back and forth. So I went and I went with him. I don't know, you know, for, for a long, too long before yeah. that, and just totally like got burnt out. You know? Sure. But be honest with you, I wouldn't trade that for anything because, uh, again, not living in Phoenix anymore and having the opportunity to trade, I, I wouldn't trade being able to roll with him sure. and having that time with him. And just, Absolutely. Just because, you know, it's. <laughs> what Megaton would say is like, I'm gonna beat you until you don't want to be beaten anymore. Right. So he doesn't he doesn't he doesn't take it light on you. He goes 110 percent. You know, he even said to me, he's like, you feel like you're you're training, not not in competition mode. He's like, and he really got on me about competing. He's like, you know, hey, it's good to go compete at local tournaments, but you should be going to the IBJJF tournaments. You know, it's like kind of like serious. he's like, who are you? You know, right. what what titles do you have? And I'm just kind of like. I get won some local tournaments, you know. I maybe got a medal at the Pan Ams once, you know. Yeah. But, you know, won the nationals once, but you know, nothing. 
not that not nothing like him not on the level of Megaton. Right, but you know he raises the bar for sure, and that's always like ah, oh, you know, it's, he came here and you know, you know train harder, you need to compete more. You know, it's really it's like uh, it was the only time I competed this year. Last year, you know, because of moving the academy and moving my house, so it's a, it's a time factor. You know, life uh, happens. Life happens, and I'd love to get back in into training more and competing more, you know, and, uh, but it's not my time right now. So, uh, he, he got on me because, <laughs> uh, one year I showed up a crazy thing, you know, just how my life is. I went out to California to do work, yeah. worked there till Friday, looked on the, on the schedule and they're like, Oh, they just released the schedule. I fight Friday morning. So I had to change oh. my plane, leave California, go to Vegas. I got to Vegas at like midnight. Wow. I slept for a couple hours. I woke up the next day and went compete, you know? and. Uh, things didn't go my way. I lost the, the first round. Uh, he, he's like, "Why are you even going to compete? Like you, you don't compete all year long, and then you go compete at the biggest tournament of the year. You know, you go compete at the World Champions. It's like you didn't even warm up or go here or do this. You just went to the biggest one, and they expect to win. It's like, how do you expect to win? You know, it's the people that even the people that compete and that that do good at the Pan Ams and at these other tournaments, even the international ones, and, and now that the IBJJF has a point system, like they're gonna get better seeds on the brackets. So he's like, how do you expect to win? And it's like, I know, but, you know, uh, Carlos and Sean, our other teammates were going out there, and it's like, how can you expect me to sit on the sideline and not compete? How can you expect me to go to a tournament and yeah, not compete? There, I can't. There's some truth in that. And even though I'll, I, I don't maybe have a good chance of winning, it's like, well, why do you, you know, why? so you can wear the competitor shirt, like, you know, isn't. <laughs> So he really got in, and as I understand, you know, is he's on a different level. Oh yeah. Because I'd love to be on that same level, but that's that, that that's at a at a different time, you know. Sure. Maybe that time will come. Right now, my, my time is building the academy. You know, I still work. I still uh, you know travel a lot for work. I, I still have to take care of my my kids and, and try to build this for other people. But my dream, of course, is hey, we're going to take a team of guys to yes. the Pan Ams. Uh, I think my, like Megaton's dream is that hey, the, the Pan Ams are coming up, and we're able to take a group of our guys to go train down in Phoenix, and with all the competitors and train for the for the that, and then go out to compete together. Yeah, you know, and Carlos and, and Sean were able to do that. They're able to go down a couple times, yeah. and you know, head out there, and I just love that because building those connections. You know, yes. they went out there and they trained. You know, and. and and got to experience what I had. You know, as they like said, I, what I have, I want everybody else to have. You know, I was like, hey, you want to go compete? Sure. You know, if you're going to go down to Phoenix, oh, let me call them. Tell them, oh, you're going to go to Chicago? Hey, let me talk. Go to the World Academy. You know, uh, you know, you're going to go to San Diego. You got to go to Gracie and my town. There, there's five of them or six yeah. of them that are out there. There's all these great places to go train. Uh, so, you know, that's that's one of our goals to start to build that. You know, we're starting to see that with our kids. Absolutely. Because our kids are just starting kids. to be amazing. Oh my God. The stories about the kids that come out of here and go compete are insane. I mean, they go and they mop, you know, you know their kids, but these kids that learn jiu-jitsu here go and compete in the local tournaments here, like Carlos's kids. They come back and you know what? They're champs and they didn't even break a sweat. And it's, 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 the stories you hear are just incredible. They're fantastic. We got to give a shout out to Carlos. Carlos, Carlos Vargas yes. runs the, the kids program here, and uh, you know we're we're six years in, and there's kids that have been with us for six years, and you know we only do it one day a week. We just do it Wednesday nights. Sure. You know we we don't charge that much. We just want people to come in, and those Carlos is you know kind of what we came up with and said, hey, you know we weren't able to afford martial arts when we were kids, so we're our kids program one day a week is for two hours on Wednesday nights, and I want the kids. You know, get advanced. We have open up some other classes for him. Or when when, when competition comes up, Carlos, you know, he, he, he gives so much of himself here. You know, yes, and, he does. and uh, we'll have going in every day. Have the kids come every day and go train to, to, just to get ready for the tournaments. But you know, it's impressive how many kids actually come in here almost tonight. Mm -hmm. And the orchestrated chaos <laughs> you, Carlos, really organized for all these kids. It's it's incredible to watch him with these kids because. He's a natural at it. He's yes. having fun at it, and these kids are having a blast. So if you got kids, get them into jiu too. They'll thank you later. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about. Uh, I guess you know I was on Facebook the other day, and, and by the way, I am not a social media guy, but I have to do it for my job. <laughs> Let me tell you, recently since uh, you know I got back into jiu-jitsu and started 
you know, anchoring myself here and building not only my blog, but this podcast, the response has been phenomenal. And I want to give a shout out real quick to James Krause, the USC MMA fighter. Last night he was like, yeah, let's do, let's do the podcast. I was like, wow, it blew my mind. And another big thing, Sensei, I want to tell you how much I appreciate you for giving me the opportunity to sit down and interview Father Gracie. It's going to be huge. I'm going to do a professional video, not only for our academy, but for Hoyler's Umaita Association. We can use wherever it is, but it's going to be phenomenal. So stay tuned, watch for that. Thank you so much. I'm going to tell Master Hoyler thank you. And bring me to another subject I want to talk about real quick. I'm a white belt, all right? I've been doing jiu-jitsu a long time, but I don't have the experience and I don't have the aptitude or health right now to go peak, compete. But I'm documenting my journey to competition. And one of the things I really would love to do is go down and train many times. I'm sure we can easily arrange. But tell me, like you were telling other white belts out there, the road to competition starts from there. Just showing up, just what do you do here? Well, what, do you, what would you tell me if you wanted to, if I wanted to compete, uh, which so I the did. first thing you have to do, yeah, you definitely have to show up. You have to be consistent because people that are going to come, come uh, progress in jujitsu faster are people that are more consistent. Sure. You know, if you come three times a week, one week, and then not come for two weeks, uh, yeah. you know, even though you say hey, you, you compete this or come to class the same amount of time as the other guy, but he's here, you know, two days solid every week. Okay, he's always here on. Monday and Wednesday. He's always here Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, because then he's more consistent. And when you come to the same classes too, then you're going to build because our classes build off each other. Okay, last week we covered this. Now we're going to continue to go. Just like now we've been working headlocks and guillotines and some throws. So we just keep building off each one of those. And every week we review a little bit of the last stuff and we move on to the new stuff. And so that you get more Happy. repetition. Yeah, it's, it's basic. You know, some of the greatest competitors out there right now, like you know talk about competing too is Hodger Gracie right and Hodger Gracie is just basics you know right just nothing fancy just the, the foundation of jiu-jitsu you know and it, that works it does and some of the other stuff works too the fancy stuff the barambolas and all oh. that uh, you know it, it's out there too at that high level but for the white belts you know again you just uh, Saulo Ribeiro wrote a book about you know University of Jiu-Jitsu and, and he says the goal of the white belt isn't learning submissions, it isn't learning, you know, counters, it's learning how to survive. Sure. Learning that if somebody mounts you, that you can sit there. Right. So, you know, sometimes people, oh, you know, the guy had you in mount the whole time. Like, beginning of the match, he got mounted you and he kept you in the mount the whole time, but he didn't submit you. Right. That's a small victory. Absolutely. It is, because, you know, hey, yeah, I can get out of the mount, but the number one thing to do is stay safe, don't get submitted, right? No, you didn't do anything bad. And if the guy couldn't submit you, I mean, he gets, he gets off, he's like, man, I couldn't do anything, right? <laughs> you know, it's the one story I said of my friend. My friend one day, he's like, uh, Rene uh, is like one of my brothers, you know, best, closest brothers in jiu-jitsu, and, you know, I mounted him. Oh, my God, why did I mount him? <laughs> and it was right after a Hoyler seminar. I remember this, you know, it was right after he got his purple belt, and he just, he sat there like this, you know, yeah. just, and, and there he defended, it's like, man, I held you in mouth the whole time. I couldn't submit him, right? Yeah. And, and he's like, he's like, bro, I was just working mouth defense. Yeah. And it just crushed me. Like, oh man. You know, uh, like I thought I had like I was doing good, you know, and I said it's like I was just letting you stay there and I was just working my defense. And that was and that's critical, you know, that you can be in these uncomfortable situations. That's like, again what jujitsu teaches you is to be and to be in uncomfortable situations and be okay. You know? Grandmaster Helio uh, refined these jujitsu techniques and moves just to survive. For the for the you know the, the foundation, I guess, of racing jiu-jitsu, Grandmaster Helio coming in, refining these techniques, uh, you know, early in his uh, career in jiu-jitsu, uh, was for, to survive, right? Sure. Yeah. Right. I mean, he has some of the Small longest feet. fights in history, you know, exactly. three hour fights, yeah. and you know, it's like, geez, be able to go with somebody, you know, when he went against Kimura, the, the, yes. the, he bought, fought this guy that's bigger. This you know, huge judo. Japanese chant, or well, he's like the grandmaster of Japan, right? And he's they the best in Brazil. Brazil. 
and so Grandmaster fought his student first and beat him. Some men, and he yeah, he choked him out. Yep, and then the next day he fought him, and the and the comment was, hey, if you survive five minutes, it's a win. Exactly. And so they said, oh, I'll get him. He won't even survive five minutes, and it went an hour. You know, it was like, <laughs> and. Uh, Finally, he got caught in Gamora. Got caught in Gamora. Right? Yeah. Carlos through the towel. Yeah, right. He wouldn't tap, but. Right. Um, right. But, yeah, that's. His jujitsu was. And some people just maybe disagree, but it was like, it's not. It's not the, the object isn't to win, it's not to lose. To survive. To survive, right? And not get caught, to be able to defend yourself. Uh, and then, you know, competition came in. And, uh, it's well known that Grandmaster wasn't really a fan of the competitions because of the rules and when, when they first started. Some people play the rules really well. Okay, they score two points, exactly. and then they, of course, you know, the game is to try to submit, you know, a, a, str a strategic approach to a competition is that if you're up, you're not going to take as many chances because right. you're up on points. It's the other person's job to come after you, but you don't want to, there's that balance, you don't want to get called for stalling, but you want to progress, but you're not going to go and do something kind of goofy or something like, you know, something not well thought out. You know, if opportunity is there and it presents itself, of course you're going to take that, but you're not going to try to force something too much. So that's that's understanding. It's like the same thing. If you have somebody in a bad position, the mount position, it's the other person's job to get out. You know, it's your job to kind of stay and maintain. And when they make a mistake, it's trying to make the person make a mistake. Okay, but if you don't make a mistake and you sit there and you're able to survive, well, hey, that's a that's a small win. Small win. And you know, I, I was on Facebook. Yeah, I don't mean to bring it up again, but all you guys out there who are on the BJJ groups, y'all know who I'm talking about here. Anyways, they had a poll of the best com competition team out there. They had Enzo Gracie, you know, they had the Chato uh, teams out there. And, and Alliance. Exactly. And, and Andre Galvoz, uh, and, and I didn't see Megaton's team up there, so you know what? I had to chime in and give a plug to Megaton, Team Megaton. It was like, he's not on there. What's going on here? We got the players here. Anyways, come on, guys. Y'all y'all, y'all should know better. Anyways, hey, Professor, I appreciate you coming on here again. Thank you, sir. You know, it, it's always fantastic to sit down and do these podcasts and videos. But, you know, I, I, that's I love fun. it. I enjoy it. I, I, you know, as time goes on, I'm sure we'll get more involved doing these but uh, next time on here I, I'm gonna have James Krabs which is pretty awesome in the yeah, UFC he, he actually competed with James Krabs one time yeah. <laughs> it, it, it blows my mind how small this community is and y'all know what I'm talking about how small it is and it's, 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 it's a community that's just fabulous y'all kind of support each other I mean we're all on kind of social media we all talk talk to each other and it's awesome anyways I appreciate you guys joining us tonight. Hey, my name is Jamison Sharp, and this is Michael Graber. We appreciate you coming on the Jiu Jitsu Takedown Podcast, and we'll see you next time. Thanks Thank a lot. Okay.